grunt. Yes, sir. It's going to be those two kicking off the the second half of winter semis. Pac-Man against a Greninja. Not something unfamiliar to the New York scene, though not in their uh, present forms. I guess is the way to say it. Uh, Cujo and uh, Cujo and Jay Grunt kind of mimicking the the Venia and Sinji sets that have often been occurring at the Dizino uh, brackets, which will steadily be coming back. Absolutely. So no lack of um, you know inexperience in terms of like watching these characters between these guys. Um, you know, I know Jay Grunt's been around. They were in a couple of uh, Xeno Wi-Fi's uh, between sets I've commentated or ones that I've been in. Uh, so, you know, they're no stranger to this to the scene and uh, to this tournament series. Cujo's uh, someone I haven't really heard too much about either. Um, but making it all the way into winter semis is no easy feat. Uh, but that was a phenomenal anti air coming out from Jay Grun. He's just for the start of a lot of Greninja's offense. He ends up playing the ground game uh, quite frequently, which can nickel and dime to certain degrees until he starts hunting for things uh, to confirm into forward or up smash. That one, just raw, like, I know you're going to try and come down on me with this aerial because you're Pac-Man, and Pac-Man's got some real safe buttons if he wants to land with them. Yeah, but yeah, no, a excellent call out there from, from Jay Grunt. Um, these guys will be filling each other out neutral a little bit. Um, Jay Grunt has him at the ledge again, so he's able to get a little bit of extra damage on. The counter coming out. Uh, it's going to be going angled down, hitting him off stage yet again. The back row off stage another time. Um, Jake Runs doing a pretty good job of just trying to restrict Hujo's space, uh, keep him constantly moving, keep him, uh, you know, not with his feet on the ground, uh, and constantly putting this pressure on him to just keep moving around. Yeah, it's uh, it's all about the mobility because if you start letting Pac-Man dictate uh, dictate the stage uh, positioning and control, like kind of controlling where you're supposed to go. No tech though. Oof. Uh, that's <laughs> a hard <laughs> angle too. Yeah, classic uh, PS2 angle is just <laughs> right off the backboard there. But Cujo is uh, still falling, still quite behind, especially with that nair to fair. Just pretty classic Greninja, uh, Greninja confirm, and now it's. Now he's back down to a full stock deficit, and at this point, Kuja's going to really need to start putting something together, because as long as Jay Grunt is allowed to kind of play this Greninja game that he hasn't really deviated from, like, it's just been, like, this is what Greninja does, and what do you do to deal with it? Kujo hasn't found an answer quite yet, and Jay Grunt is living the life, especially with some of these drag down combos. Uh, 100%. And again, that mobility from Greninja is making it really hard for Kujo to get any significant combos going. It's so hard to pin this character down sometimes, especially when you have to constantly be trying to find a place to land. Um, now, J Ground's playing this matchup incredibly solidly. Kujo, uh, as the set goes on, I think we'll start to figure things out a little bit, but right now, it definitely does not look very good. Yeah, you've got a long time to you've got a long time to adapt at this point, but it's all it's all on Jagron if he can find a way to close out this game, because of course stocks can fall very fast in, in the game we call Smash Ultimate as uh, Pac-Man's final smash comes out. <laughs> Strong, it's stronger than his actual final smash, hence the joke. <laughs> oh the, okay, the That the was neat. Galaga is gonna be <laughs> 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 Okay, hang on, Kujo's moving a little bit. It isn't over right now. Countering the fire hydrant, going up in the air, but not doing much. Uh, the I, I wasn't sure if that was the fire hydrant or the mango that hit him. Uh, that, do you know what? The, the fire hydrant wouldn't hit him because he was the one that knocked it away. So it was right. only the orange, and watch out for that key. But I really like Kujo's uh, change in pace right now. He's... What Jay Grunt's found, how Jay Grunt's found success throughout most of this game, as we do see the closing of the of his of Cujo's final stop. But where Jay Grunt found a lot of success throughout that entire game was by playing almost passive aggressive. Yeah. And, and by that I mean like quite literally waiting in his face. What did we see here? What did we see in this clip? As I will slow it down, we saw him full hop back and forth, up and down, and then look for his dash check. He missed, retreats back to center, waits. He's just waiting. He's waiting in his face, and he's waiting to disguise like he's waiting, but he's still waiting. And Kujo fell into it pretty frequently, which is why so many of these keys just kept coming through, and why so many, uh, why Kujo always kind of felt a little bit more antsy than it would seem, especially as a Pac-Man. 
Yeah. Zoners do not like to be playing on the back foot, um, which is kind of hard to believe considering they don't really want to be in your opponent's face uh, that often. Um, but they do not like uh, not having any room to do things. They don't like uh, being constricted, especially against a rushdown character like Greninja. Um, you know, they like to be able to dictate the tempo of the match themselves. And when somebody else is doing that, zoners in general just have a really difficult time of uh, bringing it back in their favor. Uh, so, you know, Kujo was able to, you know, once the pace changed at the end of that match, they were able to get a little bit more conversions into their favor, a couple of nifty little combos and some damage. Um, but I think Kujo, you know, is trying to be a little bit too aggressive instead of holding back and, and trying to reset in neutral. Uh, they're trying to go in out of, uh, out of disadvantage state, and that's kind of where they're falling a little bit. Oh, but you, yeah, you gotta watch out for the active hitbox of Hydrant. Things so like Greninja's counter can just trigger on it and hunt you down. Uh, this is kind of a reminiscent of game one we see a little bit here. Jay Grunt kind of using the Hydrant to his advantage, making sure he can use that wall as long as he establishes his lead right from the get-go. And that's what we saw uh, with that first stock. So now Jay Grunt feels, uh, feels quite free to rest on his laurels, spacing out some forward airs, throwing some shurikens, just kind of doing what Greninja does best. Yeah, calmly going to ledge. He doesn't need to rush it against Pac-Man and force himself in, especially with a lead that he has now. A solid down to start, but nothing, nothing coming from that. Just now, he's now he's really on the hunt here. He smells blood in the water. Yeah, another nightmare. This is like primo uh, Greninja goofy little combos percent. As you see, double nair off of a down tilt uh, into almost an up air. Uh, so you know, there's a little bit of a, you know, I, I think once they get to the mid percents. It's Jay Grunt going to be looking for some bigger combos. And then, you know, once they get to higher percents, it's going to be looking for kill conversions. It's going to go deep now. He uses the Hydro Pump to get back, but Kujo is not not really disturbed by it at all. Pac-Man's recovery far too variable for something like that to, to catch him off guard. But a quick dash attack. It's... It's Greninja's best tool for a reason, and one sparsely used by Jay Grunt, which makes it that much more effective. Oh, okay. <laughs> That's a way to get Bell off of your screen. <laughs> That's not, I like that. I like respect you can't use it. You can't use your tools, and what are you doing? Dash attacking at me? Oh, Jay Grunt is just waiting in center, just holding that, uh, holding the Pokeball and not letting the the spherical himself, uh, Pac-Man, come through. Uh, and Wow, like just very, very oh quickly, God. the tables just never seem to upright themselves. <laughs> what a solid confirm oh on the part. Okay. Jay Grunt, you madman. He had his Wheaties this morning. Sheesh. Look at this. Dash attack, up air, forward air. All right, tries to space him out, gets a nair, up, or excuse me, forward air. That's it. Man, that took it from 30 to 60. And Kujo did not have a way to reset out of that. That is insane pressure that Kujo just could not find a way around at all. Jaygrun has been changing up his tempo so phenomenally throughout these games where he'll, he'll wait in center for a while. He'll see what he does. He'll try and download and see what Kujo ends up doing. Then, boom. Surprise. He's coming in with Nair Nair up there. Like, surprise, he's chasing you down with with back air. He's in your face when you don't want him to be. But wait, he waits. He waited there and waited for Kujo to get impatient and fight out of the corner, which is n exactly what you don't want to do against majority of the cast because they will blow you up for it. Now, on to game three. We'll have to see if Kujo, yeah, he does want to change. <laughs> He does want to try and change up the stage a little bit, though. I feel like you have you have something to say about this. He's biting my my lip the whole set, uh, trying to be like, oh man, what if they went to Kalos? That would suck, wouldn't it? And they went to Kalos. So this is the stage that is good for both of these characters, just because they get to hang out uh, on the sides and uh, basically wait for the opponent to approach a lot. Both these characters love this stage because it is big and they just... If they want to play patient, this stage allows them to do that. So, if unless we see anything flashy from either of these guys, uh, we might be in this for the long haul, my friend. I mean, speaking of a little bit flashy, some of these resets and Kujo just super delayed on pressing a button out of hit stun. Like, I understand you don't want to use your air dodge uh, too early, 
save it for you and get out of trouble, but holy smokes, like he's just getting bullied with some of these up air, uh, up, up air up tilt loops that aren't even loops. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, and that's another thing I've been noticing this whole set. Who just had a really difficult time just getting out of disadvantage in general. Like, they're, they're not mashing an aerial to fastball out of it. Or like you know, air dodging, uh, even heading towards the uh, sides until like they're incredibly late for sense to try to grab ledge to get a reset. I mean, he's having a really difficult time of figuring this out. When they're in neutral or advantage, they do fine, but it's getting out of the disadvantage state that is proving to be really difficult for them. Yeah, they're they're really in dis uh, in disadvantage for long stretches of time and. Like, even things like these hydrants like, aren't really working to establish some semblance of control. Because Jaygrunt just really isn't respecting them. He's he's holding firm, he sees the, when the hydrant comes down and just simply jumps over it. And Kujo hasn't really done a lot to go air to air or try to anti-air. So yeah, might as well just try and use it as a projectile. Alright, Jaygrunt now, taking his time, respecting the bell. That was so good. That was such a cheeky little shuriken, but it immediately flipped the situation, going from, like, <laughs> Kujo's ledge trap to his own. Luckily, Kujo is able to get back, but not for... Okay, now... <laughs> now this right ledge has just become center stage, I guess. Yeah. Um, okay, falling out of the up air, Kujo gonna try to land. He gets counter hit. Um, off stage, trying to find a way back. Gonna the side B is going to connect with Jay Grunt, and so is the Mango. All right, Kujo getting that first stock off. That's big. Um, if they can, you know, stay in advantage for a little bit, they might be able to get something good going on the second stock. And bumping into the wall, Jagrun not doing anything. Calls the neutral get up, but mistimes his punish. Kujo walks yeah. away scot free and has a chance now into this center stage. Yeah, the counter be... is not going to connect. He was touching the uh, fire hydrant. Sorry to cut you off He's there, gonna, no, it's, That's fine. I mean, ex it is exactly what is uh, what's currently happening, but this is the type of style that I think Kujo is really going to benefit from. If Jaygrunt is going to constantly just go to these platforms, like full hop and then double jump and try to land with uh, try to land with Nair, even if he's not approaching, then stick to the ground. Like, don't try to give him anything to chase. Don't try to go anti-air. Uh, see, see what we see what happens. Like he, yep. he, he runs up, tries the four air, force the initiative. Granted, he's down, but you still have plenty of time to work with. You don't need to rush anything, and especially since Pac-Man can put on so much damage. Slowly, you see Kujo is starting to bring this back a little bit. Um, and slowly but steadily, yeah. but the like Dashak is such a strong opener, and uh, no. oh man. Yeah, Jay Grunt's just so good at fighting out of center and keeping you in, in the corner. You're having a very difficult time uh, doing anything meaningful at this point, Kujo is. Like, at the lower uh, to mid percents, Kujo can do a little bit with combos, but, like, once you get to the higher percents where uh, knockback is a lot farther, it, it, it's really difficult. Man, he's gotten hit by the, the, the substitute on the Hydrant multiple times now. Yeah, Mango's still active, but he... Ninja should be able to recover from this. Now he gets his upbeat back. He uses Ooh. me instead. Yeah, that was a good mix-up. Yep. Uh, gonna try to get back using the wall cling and the shuriken to get a little bit of drift there. Alright, dash attack, forwarder, not gonna connect. Hey, he but character development. He jumped out of hit stun. He didn't he wasn't just going to take it. It was the it was the long-term two-game conditioning. Drops the apple! Right, it's, if, if you got anything in your back pocket, Kujo, now is the time. Unfortunately, that is be it. Yeah, Nair to fair. Got to love it. That is a quick 3-0 coming out from our man, Jay Grunt. They are advancing into winner's finals where they will be playing against Jonathan and presumably his Aegis. Uh, more than likely, but yeah, we got to see the, the classic Greninja whiff punish. I mean, it's the... It's what the character has been best at for about like four or to six years so i thought you were gonna yeah. say games and i was like uh no no, no, no. years <laughs> greninja's uh high high overall speed amazing jump height like good combo starters like character is phenomenal at making you uh making you feel bad for whiffing it's yeah. it's some other it's some other areas where he can uh where he can struggle of course but if Kujo had, 
since Kujo more than likely was landing with a lot of these aerials, and especially later in that game, trying to trying to force things to happen, like you're gonna get you're gonna get caught by something. And throughout all three games, Nair was that that pinnacle of starter. Absolutely. Um, but you know, Kujo did get three would but they made it all the way here in bracket, uh, guaranteed at least fifth place. And, you know, that's no easy feat in a tournament like this. So, uh, props to them for making it this far. They're not out of the woods yet. They have to play They have to play Zane in loser's bracket. Um, but if they win that, they're guaranteed.